Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to 864 More Reasons to Love New York. I am Patty Artessa, the Director of Public and Government Affairs for AAA Northeast. I would like to welcome our audience to this webinar, which will be an informative presentation on the Thousand Island. This region is located along the peaceful border between Northern New York State, the US, and Southeastern Ontario, which is Canada. With us today, we have several panelists. We have Jill and Tilly, Jill Folsom and Tilly Young. They're sales managers and marketing and communications with the Thousand Island International Tourism. We also have Claire Wakefield, who's the Assistant Operation Manager for Media Relations at Folk Castle. Rebecca Hoffinger is the Executive Director of Antique Boat Museum. And we also have our very own Anastasia Stowatsky, who is our AAA Northeast Travel Advisor. Welcome, everyone. This webinar will be recorded, and we will have time at the end of the presentation for question and answer session. Please enter your questions in the chat box on the right side of the panel. And as I mentioned in our invitation, the Thousand Island has a mystical reputation, has a, definitely a rich history. There is so much to explore in the Thousand Island. You can discover the Bolt Castle, a famous monument to one man's love for his wife, and you can get there by water, taxi, or private boat. If you're interested in finding out more about the region, maritime culture, take a trip to the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton. Or you can explore the Lake of the Isles, a secluded area cut off from the rest of the St. Lawrence River, and it's only accessible via a too narrow passageway. A Thousand Island Cruise is the perfect way to see the beautiful castle, dine on the local seafood, and hear tales of the region's pirate and boat history along the way. Our first um, presenter will be and co-panelists um, will be Jill and Tilly. And I'll give you a little bit of their background. Tilly is a native of the Thousand Island region. She's now settled with her husband, Clayton. She has been with the Thousand Island International Council, the region's destination market organizer, for nearly 30 years. Her tourism marketing career began in, in visitor services, and in recent years has spent most of her time in the group and meeting markets. Jill is a native of the Thousand Island region, now settled with her husband, two children, and their black lab, also in Clayton. She's been with the Thousand Island International Tourism Council, um, the region, for over two years. Jill has over 25 years in marketing, communication, and design. Thank you, Jill and Tilly. Welcome. And I'll turn it right over to you now, Tilly. Oh, thank you so much for having us. And we welcome everyone to the virtual tour of the Thousand Islands. Now you'll see by the map that early settlers knew the importance of the waterways, and that's where they built their homes and they settled the villages along the shorelines. Now, um, it's still a major transportation route, but for most of us, the waters of Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River are primarily for fun, such as boating, fishing, swimming, and paddling. Each of these towns has a unique character and hosts a great calendar of events, and most have weekly farmers markets and free waterfront concerts throughout the summer. Next slide. In all, we have 1,864 islands that are shared by New York and Ontario. This region rests on a rugged bedrock of granite, and during the Ice Age, channels were cut and the land left behind became our islands as the ice retreated. From native people to French explorers, fur trappers and rum runners, freeing slaves and gilded aged um, millionaires, the Thousand Islands has many unique stories. We're home to the safety pin, Thousand Islands dressing and the very collectible redwood glass. Next slide. Now, August of 1938 marked a new era as vehicles were able to island hop across the Thousand Islands between New York and Ontario. This uh, scenic bridge also allows for year-round um, access to Wellesley Island. Wellesley Island is the region's um, largest of the New York islands, and it also is home to our latest, late, largest state park. That park provides camping, hiking, fishing, and many winter outdoor opportunities. 
The island is also home to two golf courses and a historic planned community with ornate cottages, a few shops, a great little ice cream parlor, and a tabernacle. Next slide. Now we get asked all the time, what's the best way to see the Thousand Islands? And our answer is to hop on a boat. So for nearly 100 years, we've had boat tour companies providing scenic tours. Today, you can hop on either Uncle Sam boat tours or Clayton Island tours for a fun and informative trip. Several options include sightseeing tours with stops at Bolt Castle, Singer Castle, or Rock Island Lighthouse. And many provide meal trips, sunset cruises, craft beverage tasting cruises, um, and both companies are available for charter, for use for reunions or private events. Next slide. And here um, is just a, a brief slide on Bolt Castle, but we're going to kind of skip this one because we have the expert in house when, with Claire um, in our group, and she's going to talk more detail about this in a few moments. The next slide. Um, Singer Castle is a 28 room hunting lodge that was built for the Bourne family. Um, Mr. Bourne was the fifth president of the Singer Sewing Machine Corporation. Um, and um, it, that home was used for about 60 years by the family before it changed hands. And it's now available for guided tours with boat transportation provided by Uncle Sam Boat Tours as part of their two castle cruise. But if you really want to explore every inch of this castle and its grounds, you might consider staying the night in the Royal Suite. Next slide. Now the St. Lawrence River um, is an amazing waterway to explore. To really learn how this uh, region was shaped, I suggest spending some time at the Antique Boat Museum. You'll hear more details about that in a few moments from Rebecca. Rock Island Lighthouse is one of six in our region and is the Thousand Islands newest New York State Park. This was an active lighthouse from the mid 1800s till 1955 and it's now open for tours during the summer months. And the tours include being able to see the lightkeepers home as well as climbing to the lantern room. Transportation to this lighthouse is available through Clayton Island Tours. Next slide. Now we're gonna take a look at some of our little communities. Alexandria Bay is a fun, energetic little town and it houses some great waterfront accommodations that are just steps from downtown shops and, and restaurants. Themed festivals, events, and live entertainment take place each summer. And just outside of town is one of two of our drive-in theaters that we have available in the region. Next slide. Uh, Lake Ontario flows into the St. Lawrence River at a point in the village of Cape Vincent known as Tibbetts Point. Here sits another one of our treasured lighthouses, and although you can't climb to the lantern room of this one, the grounds are open to the public, and the point offers one of the best viewing spots for sunsets and ship watching. Cape Vincent has a rich French heritage that can be seen in its architecture and can be heard in the stories told at the museum there. Broadway Street has boutiques, coffee shops, brewery, galleries, and restaurants. And accommodations in and near Cape Vincent include mom and pop motels and a fairly large cottage and vacation home property just outside of town. Next slide. On a large protected bay in Lake Ontario sits the village of Sackett's Harbor. And this um, is a very historic village with many sites and attractions that share the history from the War of 1812. We have over 100 buildings left standing from the early 1800s, and although many of them are private homes, others are used as historic sites, restaurants, antique shops, and more. A visit to the Battlefield Historic Site or the Military Cemetery will keep all the history buffs in your group happy, while the shoppers and foodies are gonna be very um, happy strolling downtown. You might wanna hop on a stand-up paddle board or take in one of many of the special events that they have hosted there. Next slide. Clayton is a charming little town with a great shipbuilding history, but it was also the terminus of the railroad during the Gilded Age. So many of the rich island owners would come here by railroad, be greeted by their boatsmen for transport out to their island retreats. 
now Clayton home, Clayton is home to the nation's largest freshwater boat museum, the Antique Boat Museum, and other cultural sites include the Thousand Islands Museum, the Clayton Opera House, and the Thousand Islands Arts Center. We invite you to take a stroll downtown and visit the shops, tasting rooms, and restaurants along the waterfront trail, and the region's only AAA four diamond rated hotel is found along this trail. Next slide. Okay, Watertown is our um, county seat, and it's a small city that has all the basic things that you would expect for a small city, including, you know, the mall and fast food um, and big box stores. But once you get away from that strip, the historic downtown really takes advantage of its amazing architecture through updated use as boutiques, restaurants, brew pubs, and galleries. Outdoor adventure in the form of whitewater rafting, hiking trails, downhill skiing, and more are just steps away. Zoo New York is 32 acres of exhibits of native animals in natural settings. And the zoo is surrounded by parkland that was donated in 1899 and designed by famed landscape architect, John Olmsted. Next slide. So the craft beverage scene is alive and well here. Um, our microclimate in the St. Lawrence River Valley uh, provides amazing growing environment for hops and cold hardy grapes. Other crops such as corn, wheat, berries, and other fruits are used in the production of our favorite cold beverages. So far we have four distilleries, five breweries, and 10 wineries. And you add some award-winning cheeses, fresh fish, or meats and veggies from our local farmers, and you can really get a taste of the Thousand Islands. Next slide. Well, if we learned anything from 2020 is that we all desire and need wide open spaces and fresh air. And this region has been a fresh air destination for decades. Trails, and hike, or trails for hiking and cycling are available and several organizations offer outdoor ecology sessions to help us all become better stewards of our land and waters. Next slide. Thousand Islands has always been known as a playground. We offer world-class fishing, a variety of paddle sports, great golf courses, lakeside sand beaches, scuba diving parks, horseback riding, snowmobile trails, and so much more. Here we say that we do get four full seasons and we need to be able to enjoy all four of them. Next slide. If you're looking for a way to get your kids to unplug, we have lots of things to keep them busy go-kart tracks, mini golf, petting zoos, ice cream parlors, drive-in movies, s'mores over a campfire, ship watching, stargazing, and so much more that's going to help your family reconnect. Next slide. Now the Thousand Islands has many different forms of accommodation, everything from small cottages and cabins to four diamond <clears throat> hotels. Some properties you may be familiar with and those are the ones that proudly display their AAA rating. Clayton's Thousand Islands Harbor Hotel is our region's premier property with four diamond rating, followed by several of our Watertown hotels with three diamond or approved status. Now I'd like to pass this on to Jill so she can close out our portion of the session. Okay, next slide. Thank you, thank you, Tilly. I appreciate that very much. Um, we invite you to explore our website, visitthousandislands.com. Um, you'll see that it's more than just database listings. Uh, there's great information for first time visitors. And one of our favorite sections is the thousands of stories. Um, it's the drop down is stories. Um, they provide insight into the region that goes well beyond just listings. Um, you'll also see the images at the bottom of our site are user generated content. So pictures are in real time and feature actual guests enjoying their visit. Um, next slide. Lastly, we invite you to follow us on social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram. And thank you all for this opportunity and we wish you all happy travels. Thank you, Jill. You really gave a great review of all of the wonderful places to stay there. Um, we're going to move on to our next presenter, which is Claire Wakefield. Claire is an assistant, um, serves as the assistant operation manager in media relations at Bocasso. She also oversees weddings um, in 
areas of the Float Castle facility. She has been a Thousand Island resident for over 11 years, and she loves sharing and exploring the region's unique offerings. Welcome, Claire. Thank you, Patty, and thank you for this invitation to participate today. It's a fun group. Our pleasure. What I'll start with today is just a brief history of George Bolt and how the castle came to be, and then we'll continue on to our present day operations. Next slide. So George Bolt was born in 1851, and in 1864, he immigrated to the US from Prussia at age 13. He started working in kitchens in New York City and at age 25 was hired by who would eventually become his future father-in-law to manage the Philadelphia Club in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> it was there that George met and eventually married Louise Kerr. They were married and they had two children together, which you can see in that right image, George Jr. and Clover. Next slide. So George um, had a small beginning, but he continued to be extremely successful in his ventures. He, following the Philadelphia Club, he went on to build the Bellevue Stratford Hotel, which is that structure in the center of this letterhead here. It still stands today and is operated by Hyatt as a Bellevue Hotel. In 1893, Bolt became the proprietor of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. As you can see on this letterhead, they were originally two separate structures, but he was um, a key person in kind of combining those two hotels to make one very luxurious experience for guests. And these lavish hotels um, really appealed to the Gilded Ages ultra wealthy families such as the Vanderbilts, Astors, Rockefellers, etc. And George's success placed him very closely to this high society group. Next slide. This is my antiquated map to go with our antiquated <laughs> history. This is from the 1890s. Um, to escape the congested city life, as Tilly mentioned, Many elite fled on trains to the beautiful Thousand Islands region on the St. Lawrence River. And you'll see a tiny blue star on that map and we're just gonna keep zooming in. Next slide. So this is a chart dash map from the 1890s as well. Um, and now that George was a millionaire, he was among this elite <laughs> group and fell in love with the region. He purchased Hart Island, which is right where that little blue star is on this image and um, also purchased a large amount of property on Wellesley Island, which is that large island in the center of this image. And that is where Bolt Castle Yacht House is located kind of off of Wellesley Island and adjacent to Hart Island. Next slide. So when George purchased Hart Island, um, it came with this original cottage and this was relocated to Wellesley Island. And the idea was to build a full-size Rhineland style castle uh, beginning in 1900. This was intended as a gift for George's wife, Louise. George also renamed Hart Island from H-A-R-T to H-E-A-R-T and altered the shoreline mm -hmm. to <laughs> to uh, resemble more of a heart shape. So there was definitely romantic undertones with this very large gesture. And about 300 workers, including stonemasons, carpenters, artisans, um, and others fashioned this six story, 120 room castle that was completed with tunnels, a powerhouse, Italian gardens, gazebo, pool, a Rhineland style defense tower, also known as Ulster Tower to us, and a dovecote dash Henry. So in addition to the castle, there was a number of other significant structures as well. Next slide. Speaking of additional structures, Bolt Yacht House, which is located off of Wellesley Island, was also constructed around this time. And contained a um, living quarters for a captain and caretaker and an impressive fleet of boats from launches to speed boats. This image I particularly love because it has the 106 foot houseboat La Duchesse um, and that is now on the permanent collection at the Antique Boat Museum and I will let Rebecca talk more about that. Next slide. 
Unfortunately, in January 1904, tragedy did strike. Um, Bolt telegraphed the island and commanded workers to stop all construction. Louise had unexpectedly died. And while Bolt continued to summer in the Thousand Islands for a number of years, it was said that he never returned to the island, which kind of left the castle as this abandoned mausoleum of his love. Next slide. For years, Bull Castle did operate as a tourist attraction, first through George's family and after through E.J. Noble, the inventor of Lifesavers Candy, who purchased the property. I really like this slide because this, it, these are actually images from our archives that we dug up this winter. Um, you can see on the left there, that is not a current rate to enter the castle. 60 cents, while very affordable, <laughs> is not realistic for today's standards. Um, and it's also neat to see the original tour boats in that center bottom image um, kind of docked where current day tour boats also docked um, to visit the castle. So it's just neat to see people enjoying the castle from present day to back to the 30s. Next slide. Unfortunately, two world wars and a depression led the castle to fall into serious disrepair. Buildings were stripped for scrap for the war effort and exposed to elements and vandals for years. And we all know what one North Country winter feels like. So decades of this is not kind to structures of any sort. Next slide. In 1977, the E.J. Noble Foundation gifted Bolt Castle to the Thousand Islands Bridge Authority with the understanding that it would operate as a tourist attraction to be an economic stimulus for the region. Next slide. Since the acquisition of Bolt Castle and the Yacht House, over $50 million has been put into the restoration and rehabilitation efforts in the various property structures. And um, the Bridge Authority and Bolt Castle really take this responsibility seriously and um, want the area to do well and to keep drawing people to this region. This the powerhouse is one of the um, first structures they focused on and as a very um, high visibility structure on one end of the island, um, having that completed first was a priority. And as you can see, there's a big difference <laughs> between the before and after images. Next slide. Wow, what a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the dovecote. This is where Weddings do take place uh, present day. This was intended uh, to house exotic fowl um, that the bolts had. And um, as one of the original structures on the island, uh, this was in probably one of the worst conditions. But as you can see, new roof, new masonry, fully, fully recovered. Next slide. Veranda, um, another really stunning transformation. It now is fully roofed, covered, which is good. The veranda also serves as a rain location for our wedding ceremonies. Next slide. Gazebo as well, um, just a really charming little structure for guests to check out on the island. This is on the channel facing side of the island and it's just really neat to um, view ships and view campus and explore. Next slide. We're going to move to the interior of the castle briefly. Um, this is the same vantage point looking at this structure of the grand hallway and staircase. As you can see, extremely vastly different um, images we're looking at here. Total replacement of the staircase, floors, walls, basically everything. Um, it was pretty interesting when the castle was gifted because there were entire rooms that were completely full of millwork, um, original mantles, tiles, um, just plaster molds, everything that was intended to be completed, but just was kind of just dropped and left. And luckily a lot of it was um, unaffected and still there. So we were able to make molds from the plaster molding. And while the materials are more um, present day, the aesthetic is still from that Gilded Age look. So we're fortunate for that. Next slide. 
I really like the library image. And although it's not identical from the perspective, you can kind of see the built-ins and the fireplace to the left of the black and white image. Um, it really shows, helps show the graffiti. Um, the upper floors of the castle are unfinished and still somewhat resemble this, but the this just shows that it was throughout, you're starting with bare plaster um, and just the transformation has been truly fun. And we are fortunate to have a lot of original, once again, a lot of original materials. This fireplace is beautiful. I should have included a detail shot and there's amazing, hand carved wood panels of Bolt Castle and little storybook characters in this library. Next slide. And of course, we can't forget the stained glass dome, which is an extremely dramatic presentation, right? rising 60 feet above the grand staircase when you first walk into the castle. It has 6,000 6, hand cut pieces of art glass and um, was created by Brennan Studios from Syracuse, New York. And as I I like to think of it as a nice cap on this whole big, beautiful space. It is Next. absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. One of my favorite features um, of Hart Island are the incredible flower gardens we have. Um, we have approximately 20,000 plants and flowers grown annually in our own um, Bridge Authority greenhouses. And then additionally, um, about 12,000 more are grown by other suppliers. So it's just an insane amount of flowers that um, make their way. I included this little barge full of flowers because it's easy to forget that everything on that island has to get there by boat. So mm -hmm. everything makes a little journey over <laughs> and before it gets planted. And I also wanted to quickly touch on the lower left image, which is one of the newer outdoor features on the island, which is the Italian gardens. Um, and just, it's a very popular, place for visitors, great photo op, the powerhouse is in the background. It's just, just beautiful and um, kind of has that formal look to it that a lot of people seem to be drawn to. Next slide. Yacht House present day. This also went underwent significant restoration and rehabilitation efforts and did open to the public in 1996. It is the only structure left of its kind and is on the National Register of Historic Places. This is also an incredibly dramatic space rising up 64 feet to the peak of the roof and currently houses the 1892 steam yacht Kestrel, which is very representative of yachts of that period. It also houses a significantly, um, just significant loan display from the Antique Boat Museum, which we are very appreciative for. And then there's also living quarters available to tour. Next slide. <laughs> Weddings and events, the fun stuff. Many couples take advantage of our beautiful setting at Hart Island and for photo ops um, and get married at Bull Castle. We offer 90 minute ceremonies only and reservations seven days a week with some exceptions. We also host um, the 4th of July fireworks every summer with the exception of last year. And it is just a fantastic dramatic display to have fireworks launch from an island over a castle. It draws thousands of visitors every year from boat, every year. from boat and land, yes, and island um, to view the display. And um, this is put completely sponsored by the Alexandria Bay Chamber of Commerce and many local businesses and individuals in the town. We are simply the host, but love to do it. <clears throat> and during traditional non-COVID years, we also host a number, a number of family days which are regular admission days, but feature special activities for children and families. So on the right, that's an image from one of our fairy tale adventure days, which is traditionally in the fall. And there's kind of a pirates and princess theme going on and the kids just <laughs> love it. So it's really fun to see everyone get dressed up. Unfortunately, we will not have um, any of those special events this year, but we hope to continue them in 2022. Next slide. As Tilly mentioned, there are a number of ways to uh, get to Bolt Castle. We are on an island, you cannot drive here. So you need a boat <laughs> to get here. <laughs> a lot of people think that we're uh, drivable, but we are not. So um, 
there is Uncle Sam Boat Tours, as Tilly mentioned, and Killeen Island Tours. Uncle Sam also has a direct shuttle if you do, are not interested in a full tour that um, comes directly to Boat Castle and back nonstop every day. So that is useful if you are just trying to see the castle and move on to other activities. You know, Claire, is that what you take back and forth every day? No, sure. we um, we take a separate shuttle with all the staff um, travels mm -hmm. on. <laughs> we also yeah, serve. I, oh, sorry I have to pass um, Boat Castle every single. My sister has a place right at Wellesley Island, so as soon as we come out with the boat uh, out of her um, place, we hit straight ahead. There we are. Yeah, it's it's Absolutely it's dramatic. breathtaking. And I don't think um, people realize how high it rises up in elevation too. I mean, the castle no. is on top mm -hmm. of this very dramatic hill. So it is extra imposing as a boater, especially. Um, and speaking of private boater, we have ample docking for um, anyone coming to the island from their own boat or watercraft. During traditional years, um, we, when the international border is open, we also have an international port of entry and have two boat lines that depart from Ontario, Canada, one in Rockport and one in Gananoque. Um, fortunately, that border is still closed this year, but that is uh, significant and important to note for future. Next slide. Our top priority is for guests to enjoy their visit and have a great experience. Uh, last year, with the guidance from federal and state governments, we implemented this following list of procedures to ensure the health and safety of visitors to Bolt Castle and Bolt Yacht House. Face coverings are required entry for all of our buildings. Um, common areas are sanitized frequently. There are cleaning checklists that staff um, fill out and follow. And luckily we are situated on a five acre island and there's plenty of space outside to socially distance and enjoy nature. I think if you're looking for something safe and family friendly, gets you outdoors and even gets you a short boat ride, um, this is a really great option for you this summer. Next slide. And in addition to exploring the island and picnicking and being outdoors, it is an incredible place to ship watch. Uh, we're very fortunate of being located right next to the International Shipping Channel. And I always stop and watch the ships go by because they are, they feel incredibly close to the island and it's just, it's striking to see them go by. It's a pretty neat experience. Next slide. So the castle is open, we open this Saturday, May 8th for the season. And after that are open seven days a week, 10.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. through October 11th. We do stop selling admission the last hour of, um, or we stop selling admission at 5.30. So that just note that if you're planning on coming to visit. Our admission rates are listed on the left there. And all of this is also available on our website, which is listed on the bottom of each slide. I definitely think that it is worth downloading the app before you visit. We have self-guided tours through the app for people, and it's, it's just an incredible way to learn about all the restoration work that's been done to each individual room, structure, um, and the history behind decisions that were made with bolt and construction. Our island is also fully accessible, has complete restroom facilities, several picnic areas, a gift shop, a theater, food and beverage concession. Can't forget ice cream. Of course we have ice cream. <laughs> um, and we also have hosts stationed throughout all of our, um, most of our main structures to answer any questions you may have and um, just help improve your experience as a visitor. Next slide. And that concludes my presentation. Just thanks again to AAA and Patty for including Bolt Castle, and we can't wait to have you all visit. I have to say, Claire, you did a great job. This is one of my favorite places to visit. It, every time I go there, I'm completely amazed at everything that it does have to offer. So I do encourage people to just to take a day if you're up in the area and grab that opportunity. Thank you, Claire. 
Thank you. Next panelist is Rebecca, and Rebecca joined the staff of Antique Boat Museum in June of 96, making Clayton her home for over 25 years. Rebecca has held several positions within the museum since her start as the first full-time year-round courier and is currently serving as an executive director. She holds a master's degree in museum studies from Syracuse, go SU. Um, <laughs> her husband, Andrew, are proud year-round Thousand Island residents who enjoy traveling, golfing, and time on the river. And more recently, she's entrenched with a rehab project of an 1850 farmhouse. That has to be unbelievable. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Of course, not the greatest time to be rehabbing an old farmhouse with uh, what's happening in the supply chain of materials, but. <laughs> exactly, the All increase good. in everything. But welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. Thanks. And I'm just delighted to be here. I want to thank Patty and AAA. Um, the Antique Boat Museum has um, been involved with AAA for a number of years, uh, recognizing, you know, getting the tourists to our area. And of course, you know, our number one attraction in this area is the river. Um, next slide. And uh, you'll, you've seen this slide before today. I mean, it's just so breathtaking that you can't help but want to kind of zone in and see a little bit more of this amazing place. Next slide. So for those attendees who are outside the area, and when I say outside, maybe outside New York or even downstate, because not all people are familiar with the Thousand Islands area. Although I think um, our limited tourism uh, last year due to the pandemic forced some people within the state to actually explore their own backyard, so to speak. And we saw um, several visitors from the downstate New York City and surrounding areas. So it was nice to have new visitors come. Next slide. And you'll see Clayton, again, kind of setting the context. Next slide. We're actually a peninsula, um, and the museum is located on the west side of the village of Clayton, which is a very walkable community. Next slide. And we kind of anchor um, the west side of the peninsula where Hart Hotel anchors the east side. And um, what's happening right now is a wonderful river walk where you can basically go out the front door of the hotel on the river walk and walk nearly the entire waterfront to the Antique Boat Museum. This is a phase project, so it's not completely done yet, but the museum does look forward to um, being attached, if you will, to the downtown area in that way in future. Next slide. That's very interesting. It's going to be attached. Well, so there's certain areas that won't be directly on the waterfront, but the large majority of the river walk is actually right on the waterfront. So a wonderful opportunity for people to get outdoors and be on the edge of the river, which again, you know, is the number one attraction that pulls people to this area. So Claire had a couple of the then and now or before and after. And, you know, same thing here. The community is transitioned you know certainly the train coming into Clayton in the earlier uh, peak of the visitor gilded age um, you know was something that was pretty extraordinary today we have uh, a pavilion which as Tilly mentioned there's concerts and different things there's weddings that have taken place down there. It's also a deep water dock. And so to have uh, the museum in this type of community is pretty special. Next slide. Heart Hotel again, and you can see just in the lower left-hand corner of that image, that's a section of the river walk. Next slide. So the museum really got its start as a boat show. Uh, so the show existed before the museum. Next slide. And this was the boat that kind of started it all. So one individual wanting to show off his newly restored boat and created a parade along the Clayton waterfront, which gained popularity and, and yes, next slide and turned into uh, an annual event, which we still have 
every year and it's in our 57th year um, this year and it's the first weekend in August always, the first full weekend in August. Next slide. So the museum's humble beginnings were actually on the grounds of what was a former lumber mill. And you'll see the three-story structure that was actually a bathing suit factory at one time. Next slide. So we've gone from you know, small lumber mill uh, buildings that have been converted to the early museum to now a $1.4 million annual budget operation where we have this beautiful uh, building, which is our, our main entry. Next slide. This is a nice aerial, give you a sense of the overall four and a half acre campus. Next slide. And this is sort of our fast facts, uh, you know, so we have 320 boats of all shapes, sizes and kinds. There's 80,000 square feet in eight modern buildings. We employ 12 full time year round employees and three part time year round employees. And then we grow in the season of the summer uh, where we have 15 plus added to our staff. So we're in the mid 30s of uh, employees in the summer months. And we couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. So even if you're here a week or that type of thing, there's opportunity for volunteerism. And all of this is supported in large part by our friends in the museum and our members. Next slide. Again, four and a half acres of that waterfront campus. Next slide. And La Duchesse, as Claire had um, commented earlier, which was originally built for George Bolt and became part of the Antique Boat Museum's permanent collection. Next slide. The gardens at the ABM. So again, in COVID, this COVID period being outside and being able to circulate uh, in our open air uh, facility is really uh, something that's attractive to families because we are employing those safety protocols that Claire had mentioned as well. Next slide. Our permanent collection, we have everything from a dugout to a houseboat. Next slide. <laughs> So small craft, for those of you not interested in the power boats, we do have the small craft. Next slide. We have several items that are part of the supporting collection. So from model skiffs to the original souvenir paddles that were popular at, again, the turn of the last century. Next slide. We have boat building that takes place in our stone building. Next slide. And this is sort of our, our master showpiece, if you will, of a gallery. This is a particular exhibit that opened in 2014 and will actually be redone in another couple years. So this particular exhibition will only be in place for another few years, but it is reminiscent of the big motorboat shows that would take place down in the New York City metro area where each of the builders from Chris Craft to Garwood to Alco to Hacker would show off their latest models. And uh, you know it's hard from a slide to kind of give you the perspective, but this um, this houses the majority of our large boats uh, for the on display boats. Next slide. We also have the Gold Cup building, which is actually located on the south side of Mary Street, and that too has a, a, a display of larger vessels, uh, but mostly those that were on the water racing for the fastest times. Next slide. We offer a behind the scenes tour, if you will, which is uh, this image shows the interior of our storage facility. So we do have visible storage. So when the boats are not in the galleries, they're actually located in a safe place off campus, but this is open to visitors and it's all volunteer run. So we're, um, we're only open limited times for the Dobler building, but if it doesn't coincide with your visit, we can make special accommodations and we'll take you up to see behind the scenes. Next slide. 
the house bow is two stories, 106 feet, built in 1906. 1906, Claire, or 1903? <laughs> yeah, so um, 106 feet, built in 1906. And, you know, was basically George Bolt's uh, fishing barge. So it is actually a barge. It does not have its own power, but it was originally uh, positioned. It would be uh, tugged, if you will, around the river to different fishing spots. And, and from early advertisements, it actually was kind of the forerunner of the current Airbnbs because you could rent out the uh, houseboat. Now we don't offer that right now, but we do offer tours and you're able to go through with a guide um, as part of your experience here at the museum. Next slide. Pardon Me is what's pictured in this one. So we do have an in-water fleet and that's one of the things that sets the Antique Boat Museum apart from other maritime museums. Uh, we actually interpret a collection or a selection of our collection in the water and they're operable. So we do special runs uh, with our friends in the museum program as well as with the daily visitors. Next slide. These are three of the boats that are part of our in-water fleet program. And uh, some of them are available. For instance, the one in the um, background and the one in the middle serve as sunset cruise boats, which all of that information is on our website and you can um, uh, reserve a sunset cruise. Next slide. But if you're just coming for a day trip and you want to do something that's fun, 45 minute speedboat ride around the river. Again, the big attraction in the Thousand Islands region is the waterway. And we're happy to interpret the collection and give the visitor the experience of what it feels like to be in one of these original triple cockpit runabouts. Next Rebecca, slide. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So much. What a great presentation. Really <laughs> appreciate it. We're going to move on now. We just have a little bit of time left and I don't want to miss out on um, Anastasia's presentation, but sure. we enjoy everything that you had to offer. Oh, so my now, pleasure. Anastasia is a AAA travel advisor where not only does she book amazing vacations for members, she has a repeat member following, a phenomenal repeat member following. One of her favorite things about her job is finding those unique experiences, such as taking a tour of Paris, but in a sidecar, or visiting a winery in North Carolina, where you can also do a um, lima meet and greet. So welcome, Anastasia, and we're so happy to have you here. Hi, thank you for having me, Patty. Um, and first off, I'd like to thank um, all of our other presenters that we had today, Claire, Jill, Tilly, and Rebecca. Um, so as Patty said, I've been with AAA uh, going on my fourth year now. I uh, love my job. And um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about why you should be booking with a AAA travel advisor. Um, talk about some places to stay, restaurants, things to do, and of course, health and safety protocols as well. Um, so why should you be using a AAA travel advisor? Um, first off, personalization. Um, our travel advisors are here to curate a trip that's just for you. Um, you call us and you say, I wanna go to Sweden, I wanna go dog sledding, I wanna see the Northern Lights, and I wanna see a castle. Okay, we will make it happen for you. You call us and you wanna go on a road trip from California to New York, um, and you wanna see uh, some sort of giant chair or something, um, we're gonna make it happen for you. Uh, this is just the way we're here to make sure that this trip is exactly the way that you want it to be. Um, another thing is our expertise. So many of our travel advisors have been to many places around the world, um, and if they haven't, they're certainly willing to learn. I can't even tell you how many times we are, if, if we're not busy, we are sitting here taking a webinar to learn about different destinations. One of the things I highly recommend um, you do is going on to our AAA um, travel site, checking out our travel center. We have all of our travel advisors right on there and you can um, you know, pick the one that you think is gonna best make this trip wonderful for you. Um, 
Um, another thing is our AAA diamonds. So, and I know some of the other panelists have also mis mentioned the AAA diamonds as well. Um, so basically what this is, is each year a AAA uh, sends out a team of AAA inspectors to thousands of restaurants and hotels uh, to find the best options for our members. Uh, they have to pass a rigorous inspection um, with guidelines based off of whatever the latest industry trends are and member priorities. Um, so basically every AAA Diamond property is going to offer a clean, comfortable experience for our members. And lastly, uh, and probably the biggest one, is our peace of mind. <laughs> um, so we're here to take the stress out of travel planning for you. Um, you know, everybody knows the past year has been super hard on everyone um, and taking a vacation is supposed to be fun and we want to make sure that it stays that way for everybody. So, um, you know, we're here to be waiting on hold while we get a hold of our different vendors and companies um, for whatever the reason may be. If there was a flight change, you need to cancel last minute, whatever the reason, we are here to do it for you and we're going to make sure that we do it in the best possible way. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so some places to stay, and I know some of the other panelists uh, mentioned this as well. Uh, AAA um, four diamond rated property, the Thousand Island Harbor Hotel lo located in Clayton. Um, that's a AAA four diamond property is going to be an amazing property. So the hotel offers stunning views, a large patio area with lots of fire pits so you can lounge around in the evening. Um, most of their guest rooms offer window seats and balconies, and it's just a short walk away from downtown and many of the area attractions as well. Uh, and then another one is gonna be the Holiday Inn Express and Suites. If um, this is gonna be located on the Canadian side, um, so you know in 2022, if you want to make a trip over to the Canadian side, um, it's gonna be right on some of the boat lines that were mentioned, um, and it does offer complimentary breakfast, uh, AAA discounts, and of course there's a sauna um, in there as well. Uh, next slide, please. So um, some places to eat. So these are all gonna be AAA either rated or approved. Um, so we have the Watermark Restaurant, um, which is located on the Can Canadian side again. Um, it's right along the shores of the St. Lawrence River. Um, you can do some elegant dining on the inside, or if you're looking for a more casual experience, you can dine outside on the patio. Um, and then in Alexandria Bay, we do have a AAA restaurant, um, Cavaleros. Um, it's a steak, seafood, veal, lobster, you name it, um, Italian fare. It's one of um, Alexandria Bay's probably favorite casual dining choices that they have. And um, then um, if you're looking for a sweet treat in Alexandria Bay, you have the Little River Fudge Company as well. A um, wide variety of fudges and ice creams to choose from. You can't uh, go home, Anastasia, without the um, fudge or the popcorn store. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know my husband, he doesn't really do sweet treats, but fudge is one of them. That's definitely yeah. one of them that he does. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Um, some AAA things to do. Um, I have to tell you, uh, when I was researching this, and I know we had so many panelists today that they you know, went over a lot of different things. And it was funny when I was researching this, there's so many, if you go to, on to our AAA website, there's travel guides that go over everything like this. And there's just so many things to do in this region. And you kind of would think of it as a smaller region of New York, but there's just so many things to do. So um, some of the things were Singer Castle in Alexandria Bay, which was constructed between 1903 and 1905. Um, you can take guided tours of the 28 rooms and some of the guided tours include some secret passages as well, which is really neat. Um, Clayton Island tours, um, they have some glass bottom boat tours, um, which can allow visitors to visit sites of various sunken vessels, learn about the underwater ecology of the St. Lawrence River, and pass by historic locations of the Thousand Islands. And um, then the Thousand Island History Museum, which is located in Clayton. Uh, you learn about the 
life along the St. Lawrence than depicted through historical artifacts, antiques, exhibits about hunting, fishing, and commerce. Uh, and so there was no charge for admission. And then again, uh, back over to the Canadian side for any of our CAA members, um, the Thousand Island Kayaking Company, um, which is really cool. I was doing a little bit of research, uh, but they have um, nationally certified guides for their kayaking programs, but they also do mm -hmm. like camping trip and skills courses as well, which I thought was very interesting. Um, next slide, please. So, kind of the last thing i wanted to go over um just because i know we still have members out there that are unsure about traveling at this time and i want to let you know that it is safe we wouldn't recommend it if we did, weren't sure about it um so most of the hotels uh you know your big hotel chains that we have that we are partnered with have gone through rigorous different inspections they've changed up their whole cleaning protocols um, so some of the ones that we have are uh, Marriott's Commitment to Clean, which requires that all surfaces be wiped down with hospital grade disinfectant. Um, you have IHG or Intercontinental, uh, their Clean Promise, uh, they're partnering with leading experts in using the newest science-led protocols. Hilton's Clean Stay Program. Uh, promises to use the same quality disinfectants that we use at home. So they're partnered with Lysol. Um, and then Hyatt Safety First Wellbeing Always Initiative uh, promises hourly cleaning of all guest services and employees are required to get temperature checks before they even step into the building. Um, so as you can see, all of our hotel partners have definitely taken big strides to make sure that you're gonna have a clean and comfortable stay. Uh, next slide, please. And that is it for me. I would like to thank everybody for coming today. I want to thank, again, thank all the wonderful panelists. I really enjoyed uh, everything that they talked about today. And I have my contact information right there on the screen. Feel free to give me a call if you have any questions or um, you know you want to start planning your trip to the Thousand Islands. So thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. Great information. Very good. And again, I, I have to, it's been a great webinar and I want to thank you to our audience for your, for listening. And I also want to thank Jill, Tilly, Claire, Rebecca, and Anastasia for your very informative presentation. It was beautiful pictures. And I think anyone would be more than happy to add that to their bucket list. I also would like to give a shout out to Jill Drop, our behind the scenes assistant. Janet Brown and Shawnee Jarvis, my co-workers, for helping with the invitation and making the webinar possible. Please be sure to add a trip to the Thousand Islands on your bucket list. AAA Northeast, I am Patty Artessa. Have a great day, everyone, and please stay safe and well. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.